Bless you, Jake. <laughs> Good evening. I'm always running late. <laughs> My YouTube must be five minutes behind actual live streaming. Um, but bless you. Thanks, Jake. Um, yeah, this evening my my live is is about a young girl called Susan Kappa, and this one really upset me. I cried with this one because um, it's similar similar like like what happened to her similar sort of horrific trauma happened to me but you know thankfully um you know I survived and you know sh so this tonight my live is about Suzanne Kappa and um Susan Kappa was born in 1976 in Manchester Susan also had a sister named Michelle Kappa, an older sister. Susan, growing up, was a kind, sweet girl. And when Susan was around about 10 years old, she would offer to babysit for a couple. Bless you, Jake. Thank you so much, sweetie. She would offer to babysit for a couple named Jean Powell and Glyn Powell. But around that sort of same time, Suzanne and Michelle's mum and dad, stepdad, they split up and they ended up getting a divorce. And around that sort of time, she was about 10 then, Suzanne, she her and her sister would end up staying with their stepdad instead of their mum. And this is when they started to both sort of spend more time at the Powell's house. And in 1990, Michelle, Suzanne's older sister, moved in in the Powell's home and this, this sort of time, Suzanne would truant from school because of the breakup of her mum and stepdad. And she was sort of rebelling in her young life, really. She was confused growing up. So she would start to truant from school. And she herself would also sort of spend time at the Powell's house as well with her older sister. But around 1992, Michelle moved out of the Pals and Suzanne was then basically living there by herself with the Pals. They, they had three children. I'm going to show you a picture of them. Um, I have to do it this way. It really frustrates me doing it this way. I couldn't get individual photos and that's quite a small photo but the this lady here on the left top left is Jean Powell and the man next to her I believe is Glyn Powell to the right of her thank you Jake so Suzanne is now moving in and she's around 14 years old now um was she 12 no she was 12 so I'm going on a bit a couple years forward there sorry um and basically while she was living there they were getting her to sort of like teaching her to sort of like dealing drugs from the home to people that were coming round and buying the drugs and she, they also got her into like um like handling stolen goods, cars and stuff. But at that sort of time, so about a year went past now, so she's coming into her 13 sort of years. 
Jean and Glyn Powell met some new friends. It was Jean that met a woman called Bernadette who moved in three doors down the road in 91 Langworthy Road. And she also had three children as well. And Michelle, her older sister, would, would say that they were their new evil friends. She just didn't like them. She had a real strong feeling about them that they just wasn't very nice. And Bernadette, Bernadette is the lady in the middle on the bottom, on the bottom row. I'm going to change the photo to a, I might be able to get a, another one and a big old, no, that's not, that's the bed, sorry, I'm going to keep it on this photo, I'm so sorry about that. And so Bernadette was seeing the guy to the right of her, but he was 16, so he was very young, and so her three children sort of ended up staying at the Powell's house three doors up quite a lot and they basically sort of started to live there so the children so the Powell's house now had like six children in and they had the run of upstairs basically and Jean and Glyn Powell would live downstairs in the living room so Suzanne by this time she was she, like another year's gone on 14 now 15 she she would still stay there and live there at their house even though they would bully her they would pick on her they would call her names they would get her to do chores like push her around boss her about you know she was looking after the children and her older sister sort of said it wasn't that she was scared of them. It was like she looked up to them in a way, I think, because they gave her the wrong attention. So, but Jin and Glyn Powell became separated. So he moved out and he had a flat just round the corner. But they remained sort of friendly for their children's sake but they were still sleeping together occasionally. But Jean's friend Bernadette, who who lived down the road, three doors down the road, and she was all, like she was dating the 16-year-old, but the, who whose name was Anthony Dudson, and he's on the bottom right. He he then started to see Jean Powell. So Ian Dudson is now seeing Bernadette and Jean behind Bernadette sort of back. But Jean was also sleeping with Glyn's younger brother, so her ex, her kid's dad's younger brother as well. So she was sort of sleeping with you know sleeping around a bit and his name was Clifford Pook I think I've got that right hello goddess beautiful how are you big love to you beautiful thank you for popping in it's one of these nights <laughs> bless you yeah so around November in 1992 Anthony Dudson, he contacted, um, I'm going to be a bit crude now, so excuse me, it is for over 18s, and um, he contacted Pubic Lice. And Bernadette went to Jean saying, saying this to her, you know, and obviously Jean knowing that she'd slept with with him behind Bernadette's back. She sort of come up with the story of, of it must have been Suzanne, even though she knew, you know, it was probably her. And so did Anthony. 
And on the 7th of December, Suzanne was lured to the Powell's house where Glyn and Anthony Dudson were already waiting. When Suzanne walked in, they grabbed her They dragged her into the back room and they shaved all of her hair off and eyebrows. They then made her clean the hair up and put it in the bin. They went on to put a plastic bag over Suzanne's head and kept hitting her over the head. Jean and Bernadette kicked to Suzanne whilst she laid curled up on the floor. They both took it in turns to hit Suzanne with a three foot long piece of wood and a belt. She was then dragged up up the stairs into the bathroom. They made her undress and, sh and made her shave her own pubic hair off, shouting at her, saying, this is our rightful humiliation revenge to you for what you have caused to us. Anthony Dudson and McNilly then went on to shave themselves afterwards. Suzanne was then locked in a cupboard overnight. And the next morning, the 8th of December, Suzanne was taken from upstairs and locked in a cupboard downstairs because she they said that she'd had disturbed the children through sobbing all night. The next day they took her to Bernadette's house and what they done, they tied Suzanne on a mattress front ways in a spread eagle position and tied her up with electric cable. I'm going to show you what they um This is the actual bed that they tied her up on. Over the next 5 days Suzanne was tied up on this bed in that in that position. She had urinated herself they injected her with amphetamines. They burned her with cigarettes, hitting and beating her. They put headphones on her head, over her head, in her ears, and they played rave music at 150 volts. And they played the sounds of the film of Chucky. Chucky wants to play. Hi, I'm Chucky. Torturing her in between. During that week, the other two men, Paul and Lee, they were the other two men on the photo I showed before. I'll show you individually afterwards. They visited the house and saw Suzanne blindfolded, gagged, tied to that bed. She was now in her own faeces and urine. They untied her and placed her in a bath containing disinfectant and scrubbed her body with a stiff brush. With such force, they removed her skin off. Pook then took pliers and removed two of Suzanne's teeth. 
the police actually found Suzanne's teeth later on and they were put in a cabinet like a trophy. Anthony, Bernadette, Jean and Cliff all, all stood around Suzanne and Cliff took Suzanne's gag off and started to hit her with the pliers again, saying he was going to rip out all her teeth. He started to pull on one tooth, but, but, it, but it chipped. And he hit Suzanne because he hit her because he wanted the tooth to come out and he hit her because it, it because it chipped. That's what he said to her. He tried to pull on a t on the on Suzanne's tooth again and pulled Suzanne's head forward at such force there was a snap and he had pulled her tooth out. He went on to do it again, laughing. A man named David Hill, who was only 18 at the time, was asked to house sit for the day while they left to do something. And he saw Suzanne in the room tied up and she asked him to untie her Please, could you ungag me and help me? But he wouldn't, as he was scared of them, and he said that they would get him. Suzanne's older sister, Michelle's fiance, had asked had asked Ian and Glyn to help him with his car. And he actually said later, if he would have known that Suzanne was in there, he would have kicked that door in and got her out. On the 14th of December, seven days have, has gone past now. And Suzanne's family were, were worried they were going to report her missing. So they all agreed to remove Suzanne from Bernadette's house. I'm going to just change the photo. It's a very small photo. Um, so in the early hours of the 14th of December, they forced Suzanne into the boot of a stolen white Fiat Panda car. That's the exact car there. And drove 15 miles to a lane on the outskirts of Stockport. They all were giggling in the car. And as they got out, they opened the boot and got Suzanne out and they pushed her down an embankment in a patch of brambles. McNilly then pulled out a petrol can full of petrol and poured petrol all over her. He then, this is where, he then got a lighter and lit Suzanne's body on fire while singing Burn Baby Burn. The four of them left Suzanne burning, believing she was dead. They went back to Jean's house stopping to buy canned drinks before they got back. But after they left Suzanne, Suzanne managed to scramble back up the embankment and staggered along the lane for about a quarter of a mile. 
and it was around 6 10 a.m in the morning a man Barry Barry Sutcliffe and his two colleagues were walking to work and they saw her and they stopped and helped Suzanne and they took her to a nearby house to call for an ambulance. Suzanne's hands were like ash and her legs were like raw meat. Her feet were so badly charred. The lady whose house they went to, she tried to give Suzanne you know, tried to hold her and she, she just couldn't because the amount of excruciating pain she was in. But they said she was just so polite. You know, she, she, she thanked them for helping her. She had cuts all over her body, her head, her shaved head. She had burns. They had burned her hands, her feet. With the old lady, Suzanne managed to drink six glasses of water before she was rushed to hospital and managed to say the names of who done that to her before she fell into a coma. Her mum and stepdad couldn't recognise Suzanne at the hospital and they had to positively identify Suzanne from a fingerprint from her thumb, the only part of her hand that was still there and wasn't burnt. Sadly, Suzanne passed away on the 18th of December, 1992. On the 14th of December, four days before, the detective inspector Peter Wall of Greater Manchester Police instructed officers to attend the Powell's house. They all were there and laughed at each other when they were all arrested. At the beginning, they all denied it, but under questioning, Anthony Dudson, who was the 16 year old, his father said to him, you need to tell the truth. And he began to talk. The detective who listened to Anthony's statement had tears in his eyes and he wept, he sobbed as the extent of what Suzanne's suffering was revealed. And on the 17th of December 1992, all six appeared at Manchester's magistrates and were remanded in custody with kidnap and attempted murder. Then on the 23rd of December, 1992, charged with kidnap and murder. In their trial, in the coroner's report, he explained Suzanne had suffered 75, 80% of burns from petrol. She would have suffered so much pain and had no chance of survival but Suzanne fighted to hold on to name her attackers. The trial on the 16th of November, 1993, the trial began and it lasted 22 days. All six denied murder and they all tried to minimize their parts in Suzanne's murder. On the 16th of December, 1993, the jury made their verdict. It took them nine hours and 52 minutes. They were found guilty. Jean Powell was guilty of murder and was sentenced to life for 25 years. She was found guilty of conspiracy to grievously bodily harm and was found was and was given 20 years 
and she pleaded guilty to forced imprisonment and was given 20 years for that. Glyn Powell got the same as Jim Powell, 25 years. Bernadette McNelly also received 25 years. I'm going to just change the photos because some of them have been released. That's them there. Sorry about this. I need to try and do it in another way. Yeah, that is Glyn Powell there. He got 25 years, the same as Jean Powell, the same convictions. Guilty of murder, guilty of conspiracy to grievously bodily harm. And he pleaded guilty to false imprisonment as well. They both are still in prison. That's Jeffrey Lee. He's been released. Sorry. Yeah, he got 12 years. And sorry. They all got sentenced. So one got off with murder, and I think it was the one that, that you know, obviously talked and told the, like, started to tell the truth. Um, but, yeah, the, there's two that have been released, I'm going to show you. I think it's him and... That's Jean. Oh, bless her. Let's go back. And this lady here, I can't even call her a lady. Lady's not even, you know, it just, just, it's just, you know, that they haven't, they should serve their time. They should be, you know, I know goddess, you're, your system's different, isn't it, in America to what it is over in the UK. And, you know, it is a big thing. And I, I think I've done a video the other day about um, a link about a family trying to change, but like even trying to get the parliament to listen, to try and change the law in a way of life should be life. And, and you know, you know, what, what Suzanne went through, what they put her through, they're just evil, beyond evil. And, you know, she's out walking the streets now. She's got her life, you know, probably, she probably has a changed identity and different name and, you know, and it is just so evil in so many ways in what they done to her. And yeah, you know, God, Bless her, beautiful angel, you know. And I'm going to leave, leave it with a picture of Suzanne Kappa, you know. I, and I know this was a while ago, the story um, of what happened to her. But, um, yeah, they should never be forgotten, you know. And, yeah, love her heart. Um Rest in peace, beautiful angel. Yeah, a hundred percent, Jake. But but they've changed that. She's changed her name, and the one of the guys have got out as well and been released. And I think I think they got about another five years or something. And it is so so wrong in so many ways how they can just do that. You know, take somebody's life and 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 torture them and be evil and you know, they can just walk free after so many years and, yeah, love her. Rest in peace, beautiful angel, you know. But thank you for popping in. I know it's not, um, yeah, I know it's, it can be very, 
not nice, you know, to hear and, and stuff. But um, thank you for popping in and listening and watching. I really do appreciate all your support. And, yeah, big love. Peace out.